What's up everyone? Jeff with Firm Donor Pythons. Today I'm doing a, a video that's a little different. Um, I got some supplies over here from the store today. I'm going to show you kind of what a uh, daily routine looks like or weekly, maybe monthly, depending on how many animals you keep. Um, my humidifier took a crap in my room, so I had to replace that with a better one. I'm going to show you that. I got a little area rug to kind of dress the room up and give something for the snakes to go across other than these old hardwood floors. Uh, I'm gonna update you in regards to the uh, breeding going on this year. Not just, you know, kind of where the, where the females are at right now. I'm um, seeing some good signs, maybe some ovulations I kind of can see underneath you. Um, what's going on with them, what I'm seeing, what those things mean. Again, I'm not a professional, I'm just showing you what I do, what I see, and hopefully that can help you along the way. Uh, I'm gonna get some of these supplies set up, go through some of the things that I got here and why I got them, and make a little video, just a short one today, hopefully, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've been using printless newspaper, thinner, just printless newspaper, for my enclosures, I decided that that was not working anymore because it was tearing, it was sopping up a lot of water. So I went with this heavy duty contractor's paper. It was about, I think, 20 bucks a roll. It's 100 feet. I bought two rolls. I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna cut them the length to each enclosure and kind of go from there. Got a new humidifier here. It has a feature on it that I'm excited to use. It's a warming misting feature. Holds two gallons. It has a night light on it. I'm pretty excited for all that stuff. Um, new hand sanitizer. You always want to stay clean in your reptile rooms. Listerine. What would I need Listerine for? Well, I will show you that in a few moments. Some caulk to re-caulk some of the enclosures, some of the animals, after being in there for a while, they have been tearing that up, white and black. And then this is humidifier treatment. I have well water here, it's a real hard water. This will um, help prevent like calcium buildup and it leaves like a, when you run a humidifier in a room, it leaves like a white dust. So we're gonna, use some of that just a little bit I have old hardwood floors in this room I don't like the animals slithering across this that's all they really have for right now so I bought this indoor outdoor six by eight foot roll of nice soft artificial grass stuff here so we're gonna use that in the room just for them just a cheap little humidifier gauge Hopefully it works. And of course, your paper towels. Can't go wrong with a big, fresh bunch of paper towels. All right, let's get, uh, try to unroll this. This is probably doing things backwards, but it's out of the way. And I'm excited to put this down. I just mopped in here the other day, so it's nice and clean floor. Oh yeah, I'm already gonna like it just to dress the room up and give the animals something to crawl on other than the hardwood. I don't know, we'll see if I like it. I'm sure they will. Have to move some stuff here. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I'm enjoying making them. I'm kind of in a hurry. I gotta be at work shortly, probably in about an hour. So I'm just trying to get this stuff set up quick before I go. I like it already. Again, this stuff ain't necessary, but as you, your collection grows, and the more and more stuff you get, you'll find the way you like to do things, and how certain things work for you. What do you guys think? Makes it look a little more homey in here. I like it, it's softer. 
for the snakes when they're laying down. And I, on the tag at Home Depot, or Lowe's, I'm sorry, Lowe's, it said indoor, outdoor. So I'm assuming this stuff can get wet. If I need to pull it out and spray it off in the spring and summer, clean it. I'm gonna vacuum it, try to keep it clean. All right, I'm gonna open this humidifier, get this fired up here. The reason that I run one of these is I live in an old farmhouse. Um, I have oil for my heating source. In the winter time, the humidity in my house just plummets. It really sucks. And there's a couple ways that you can keep humidity up in your room. Put your water bowls under the heat source or on top of the heat source, etc., etc., whatever. But nothing beats having a humidifier. I've dabbled around with these for about a year or two now. Cheap ones work, but they just don't last long. I went through two, one last year and one this year already, so I finally went out. I'm hoping I'm getting what I'm paying for. I think this is about $120. It is a Total Comfort Deluxe humidifier. The thing I liked about this one is it had the like the hot humidity option. It held two gallons. It claims to run for 48 hours. So I'm not filling it all the time. So yeah. Anywho, let's get this thing fired up. It's up and running. Look at that nice warm humidity going into the air. It's on level five. I love it has two gallons of water in it. This makes the air so much more breathable and just so much better air quality in the room. So if you have a large collection and you are in a room and not just taking care of one animal, this is a great, great investment. Warm, soothing, humid air. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is showing you what the females are doing right now. They've been breeding. We went through all the steps on to how to prep them for breeding. In the last two videos, this is kind of the waiting period to see what they're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna start, actually I'm surprised. My last video I said I didn't get no locks from the champagne. Well, something must have been going on because she is, well, I'll just show you. All right, so I don't want to disturb her too much. So she went into a ovulation, I would say maybe a week after I made that video. And I actually did catch her in the act of breeding the morning I posted that video. And now she went from her cool side she is now laying on her hot side in these tighter coils. She was completely coiled up today, but you can see how full she is. Now this animal has not eaten in probably since December. You can see how full she is. I call that the glow. You can just tell. Once you really start breeding these animals and you can see what's going on, she is right on track is going into shed. I don't know if you can catch her eye there. And she's very dull. She's actually being really good. She might be asleep and not even know I'm here. Let me just give her a little. Oh, there she woke up. And that's a typical rabbit berm. But that's what you're looking for. I'll show you another example here. Leave her alone. So this is my big normal 100% head albino. She is also on her warm side over here. She was in tight coils earlier, but you can see how thick this girl is. Now she has not eaten probably since November. She is going into shed, which I hope is the pre-lay shed. And at 
this point, I leave the females alone. Once I start seeing them go inverted, I will maybe get them out a week or two weeks before I think they're going to lay just to kind of line everything up and get their last stretch and they know what they're doing but I give them plenty of room to come out and stretch out get ready to lay that clutch and then I put them in and you'll see them park on this on the hot side and that's where they're gonna lay their eggs so I got two girls going in the pre-lay shed I'm almost 100% sure and Right around that time is when you'll see your girls go from the cool side to the hot side. She's kind of in the middle right now. She's a big girl, but it is also 85 degrees in this room. I'll show you a couple more examples. This is my Hypo 100% head albino green granite. Oh, and she made a mess for me. That's typical. So, you can see in this animal now she's not going in the shed yet she still has vibrant colors but you can see right here this is not an ovulation I call this just they have the glow when a firm ovulates I would say about halfway to maybe three quarters of the way down they will blow up they will be enormous it's hard to miss like you cannot miss it Unfortunately, I did not videotape the last ovulation I've seen. If I see one, I will throw a quick video up. And I actually just got asked a question today. Don't be afraid to pull your girls out and clean them. Just be gentle. Let them come out and let them exercise. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. So probably tomorrow, I have to pull this girl out, clean her up decided to make a mess over here in the corner. Curates and poop. You can see how they're all doing that coil, either on the cool or the hot. Now, as soon as she starts going in the shed, she will move over to that hot side. Nine times out of 10. This is my granite girl, 100% het green albino. not in in the coil yet but you can still see how thick this animal is right here once you see an ovulation them girls will get it's hard to miss it almost looks like they just swallowed a, a very large meal but she's not even close I can tell she's not close to the shed she's not in a tight coil yet all right so this is my ivory granite this back here, it's hard to tell in the video, but right there is significantly bigger. She could possibly be coming out of ovulation or starting. See how the sides are kind of blown out? But that's a good sign. Ovulation here. Beautiful, real high white ivory granite girl. But that's what you're looking for swelling, that nice thick fullness, and usually right around that time is when you'll start seeing them going to a shed and hugging that hot spot. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this video. It was short. I want to show you some new supplies I got, just what I do in the reptile room on a daily basis. Um, an update on the females and what you want to look for about this time. Uh, remember your girls haven't been eating. You want to see that nice full um, girth on the animal. You want to see an ovulation, which is very hard to miss. Uh, I mean, unless you're not checking your animals every day, but an ovulation, when I catch them, I would say they are about a day, maybe two days. You can kind of catch them right before, or right after. Um, but your animal, your female will look like it ate a very large meal. It'll be in a portion of their body about midway down, maybe a little further down. That is what you're looking for. Usually after ovulation, it's 60 days. In 30 days, we'll shed. Another 30 days, you'll have eggs on the ground. Roughly, give or take a few days, I've had girls go 
35 days, 32 days, 27 days. I usually start counting my 30 days when them girls go into blue. So when their eyes really go opaque and when they are 100% in blue, ready to shed, that's when I start counting. So I usually get eggs around 27 days. But like I said, give or take a few days, don't panic. Um, again, coiling, going in the shed, moving to their hot spot, kind of getting uncomfortable. You won't see no inverted animals yet. And when they're inverted, don't be alarmed. You'll see them laying on their backs with their bellies up. Some aren't as um, pronounced as others, but my first year, <laughs> I seen my female invert and she was completely flipped upside down. That's just her moving things around, getting ready to lay that clutch. So don't panic, take your time and just watch your animals. They know what to do. Keep your room temperatures right. They know how to thermoregulate where they need to be. So look for ovulation, look for the coils, look for that stage where they're going in the shed. You'll see them starting to hug that warm side. Then you'll start seeing some inverted animals closer to the time when they lay, but definitely those things. And then, you know, after their ovulation, you can call it a post ovulation shed or a pre lay shed. Once you have that shed, roughly around 30 days, you have eggs on the ground. Be prepared, have your incubator ready. We're gonna go through all that in the next video. Trying to keep this short. I could talk about this all day. I got some cleaning to do. I actually gotta be at work shortly. So if you have not seen this shirt, we are in dire need as a community of reptile keepers to go support you as ARC. These new bills and these new little laws that they're slipping into these bills are going to crush our hobby. It's gonna just pet owners in general. Get go on to US Arc, follow the steps. They have it like legislation for dummies 101. You read it, it tells you the steps, what you can do to send the emails, um, the, the phone numbers to call. Do it. Please do it. I don't care if you have a room full of 22 Burmese pythons. I don't care if you have a leopard gecko that you take on vacation with you every year we are not going to be able to travel with our animals we're not going to be able to ship them out to people that want to buy them there won't be able to, there won't be educational programs that can go across state lines like this is huge this is the lacy act it's it, it's a mess please go on read that and act my like i made a post on my personal facebook don't just read it act do something call share that post donate to us arc if you can even if it's five dollars if you can get a membership get a t-shirt you're supporting a great cause not just for reptile owners but pet owners unless it's a dog or a cat pet owners are at stake here our animals are at stake it, it's it's bad it's really really bad um it would be a shame if something like that would happen. So please go support US Arc. Follow me on Instagram if you can, please. It's at the underscore firm donor. Like, follow, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There wasn't a whole lot of content in this video, but I'm just trying to keep you guys up to speed and keep up my part of the deal here. Go support US Arc. Stay passionate about what you're doing. Fight the good fight. Let's beat these laws. Let's crush them. As a community, like, we can do that. Numbers is everything. So, go do all that good stuff. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hopefully this video is up in the next day or two. I gotta edit it yet. So, like, follow, subscribe. Notification bell, all that good stuff. I will keep you posted on the room. Oh, I got two new berms two big berms. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Thank you guys. Take care. Berm on.